What's up everybody, hope you're well. I've recently had a class with a student of mine and he asked me about how to do like an orchestral build up. And we came up with a few different versions of it. And I don't know, I'm feeling particularly creative today and I think I wanna try to recreate it with you and see what we can come up with. So here's my template. We're gonna do something nice and simple probably. So yeah, just a few bars of this. So let's first of all figure out a tempo. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's a little bit faster than what I originally did. Very first thing, we're going to record our sketch so that we have that to guide us. Now we have a few different options, of course, and if we don't want to go too big too quickly, we can always start with strings and add things later. So my very first instinct would probably be to have the violins taking the top line. And then what I would probably do after this is just go ahead and record the basses. And then we can just go ahead and fill out with the rest of the sections playing the chords. Then the violas would be right on top of the cellos, probably doing some tremolando kind of thing. And the second violin would basically just follow the shape of the melody and fill out the rest of the chord. This would be level one, right? Really simple. One simple variation of this could be using cellos divisi rather than having the basses right at the beginning. And maybe just having the basses joining on that low G, you know, saving the basses for later for, you know, more of an emotional kind of impact. Not much of a difference, but it works, so it's an option. Now that we have all this, we can always make it bigger. So let's copy and paste. If I don't want to change the orchestration entirely, one of the simple things I could do over here is probably just start by adding the horns or something. So let's do that. And with the rest of the horns, basically filling out the, the rest of the chords. So essentially doubling violin two and viola at times. So let's do horn two. For that last phrase, we're going to use four horns because it's going to sound a little bit better. So let's just mute this. Actually, we're just going to pull them down a little bit 
and blend them together. What we can do now, we could keep adding percussion or maybe use the woodwinds if we want to have a softer kind of color, particularly in the lower kind of register. So what I would personally do probably is use bassoons rather than using trombones here in the lower kind of register. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's it, let's have a listen and for this particular kind of context ideally you could use bassoons or trombones interchangeably. Let's now move on to the next one, I'm still going to keep whatever we did so far as the foundation and basically build on top of this. But we could stop at any point. You know, what we just heard was perfectly satisfactory on its own. You don't need to add anything else. This is just to show you guys different things you could do. We mentioned possibly using the trombones instead of the bassoons, but what we are going to do now is, yeah, layer the trombones on top of the bassoons. Okay, now that we've added the trombones, I think we are starting to get a little bit heavy on the lower register kind of side. So to balance that, we might want to maybe add a little bit of trumpet, filling out the rest of you know the top line. And now that we're starting to add the trumpets, this is where the difference is starting to become a little bit more obvious. Third trumpet. One tiny little detail we could add at the end is maybe bringing out that little whole melody that we have right here. Because we have quite a few different things going on and, you know, clarity is always my goal. So we have a couple of different ways to play this. We could use the woodwinds that we haven't pretty much touched at all or percussion. So I would probably be using percussion if I want a more subtle kind of accent and woodwinds if I want something a little bit more noticeable. So let's try both of them actually. And we could add maybe a flute on top and see if we like it. And this would basically be level three. Let's have a listen. Is there anything else we can do to make it bigger? Of course. So let's just carry on and copy and paste this just like we did before. And this is the moment where we can start adding percussion. And usually for the type of music I like to, you know, do, percussion do most of the heavy lifting and it's going to immediately make it sound a little bit more orchestral, you know, that classic kind of sound.
that's a very good way, you know, to provide a little bit of glue. And very often it works very well, you know, blending one section of your piece uh, together with a following section or something, depending on the context, of course. Something you could do uh, as well as adding the symbols is adding like a timpani roll. That's very common. We'll have to cut the tail of the timpani because that's going to resonate on the wrong note in a realistic, in a more realistic kind of context. A real timpanist would probably just, you know, dampen the sound of the drum as soon as we change to a different note. Very good. Um, something else we could do over here is add some piatti. Maybe that was a bit heavy, we can always edit, so let's do this. And we could stop here, of course, but we can always add more. We, we could use a triangle, for example, doing like a trill. And one of my personal favorites would be tubular bells. Maybe just at the end. And tubular bells oftentimes go together with uh, glockenspiel. And of course, really important part of this sound is usually the harp. So let's do that. We'll have to adjust a little bit of the dynamics, change some of the notes over here. So at the end, this scale would have to be an E Lydian. Maybe let's do the crescendo a little bit more even. something like this. Now that we've added all this, we could probably start thinking about what to do with the rest of the woodwinds, right? Because, you know, it would not make a huge difference in terms of sound, but it makes sense because everybody is kind of playing already and it makes sense to bring out, you know, the woodwinds. So we have a couple of different options here. We could do some runs, arpeggios and stuff like that, or we could, or we could essentially double the melody. So I'm just going to go ahead for now and double the melody on the oboe and the flute. Two flutes as well. Actually, we could just go ahead and copy copy paste this is exactly the same while the clarinets could be doubling the top line if we want to put more emphasis on on that or we could have them playing the chords i'm just going to go ahead and you know copy and paste uh, whatever we had on the violas onto the clarinets it's a very common kind of doubling and it will work well so this will be level four let's have a listen to what we have done so far For level five, we're going to do something similar, but using woodwinds in different kind of roles, doing more arpeggiations and stuff like that. Now the oboes will be doing exactly the same. And the clarinets uh, may be playing in contrary motion.
if you want to bring more emphasis on this part, what you can do is use Celeste, essentially doubling whatever the woodwinds are doing. Quantize it in eight, bring them up an octave. And also I want to finish that chord. <laughs> Okay, so this would be level five, kind of. I mean, it's very similar to very similar to what we did before. Let's say we want to do something different on the strings. So let's keep these two parts. Let's keep brass and woodwinds and see if we can come up with something different on the strings, just, you know, just for fun. Now, uh, we can, we need to adjust a little bit of the dynamics because obviously, because these parts originally were meant to be decorative to the string. All right, sounds pretty good. Something that we haven't tried yet, we could play with some kind of pedal notes with like a tremolando kind of thing, and maybe with violas doing some trills, major second trills or something like that, you know? So let's see, let's see, let's, let's try a couple of things. Before I do anything else, I think I want to double that top line, that top trumpet line uh, with CSB. Okay, so I want to try something high on the violins, maybe like a high tremolo. With the violas, we're going to try some trills. I want to change one note here at the end. So I want to change that. Actually, let's make it some kind of E at nine chord. With basses and cellos, we can try some pits. We're going to paste this to the cello track an octave higher. This sounds a bit smaller than the previous examples because we don't have percussion yet and also the bass, uh, you know, is not as clear since it's playing pits. So we might need to reinforce that with the tuba, which we forgot to add, by the way, in, pre in the previous in the previous ones. It is fine though. It's just going to be playing the tonic, nothing, nothing, you know, special about it. Before we add the percussion, we before we add the percussion, I think I want the bassoon doubling uh, the horn, at least the top line at the beginning. And then percussion. So for that, we can copy and paste a couple of things, which were fine before. Maybe the harp, piatti, timpani, all that. And yeah, and with tune percussions, I'm going to double the top line. If you want to make it build just a tad more, you can always add the bass drum. So let's just go ahead and do that. So 
so that's it that's where i would stop so because we kind of we've run out of instruments really so there you go i'm gonna play them all of them back to back which one you would decide to use obviously is entirely up to you depending on the context and where you are in the piece but this is just a few things that you could try you know so let's have a listen the first one was the one with the bass and uh, cellos essentially in octaves only strings The second one is very similar. We only have cellos divisi and basses joining at the very end on the low G. So very subtle difference. On the third one, we start to add a little bit more of the orchestral colors. We added the horns and the bassoons. So let's have a listen to that. Very cool, very cool. I really like this one. It's one of the, it's probably one of the orchestrations I use the most in my music. And the following one was with, with everybody else really. So with the trumpets finishing the melody that we had on the horns, we started to add a little bit of percussion with glockenspiel at the very end, doubling the top line that we have on the French horn and the flute. And of course the tenor trombones doubling the bassoons and the cellos. And now on the following one, we are essentially getting bigger with the rest of the percussion and the woodwinds, they're all playing and we have a big, you know, glissando on the harp. So let's have a listen. For the following example, we tried something different on the woodwinds. If you remember, we did some kind of appigiation rather than having them double in the melody. All of this we're building on something that we were doing on strings. So just to, to try something different at the end, just for fun, what we did was essentially uh, just putting more focus on the brass with the strings doing something entirely different, you know, with a, with a high note on the, on the violins, playing tremolo and with some uh, major second trills on violas. So let's have a listen to the very last one. All right, that's it guys. Let me know which one you like the most. I think they're all they're all pretty useful. I've used pretty much all of them countless times in my own music. But uh, yeah, so this is it. And as always, the files are going to be available for my patrons. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.